Again, UConn is on its way up uh, for the Huskies. We'll have Coach Dan Hurley, uh, Senior Jalen Adams, uh, Senior Taryn Smith, and Junior Christian Vital. Huskies uh, advance to face top-seeded Houston in Friday's quarterfinal round. The game will be at 11 a.m. Central, noon Eastern, televised on ESPN2. Uh, Houston won the only meeting between those schools this season, 71-63. That was February 14th in Hartford. UConn now 11-4 all-time in the American Championship. That's the most, of, most wins of any team in the tournament. Uh, UConn winning as the number nine seed today makes the number nine seed five and one in American tournament openers. The only eight seed to win its opener was ECU over UCF in 2015. Huskies now three and zero all time against USF in the tournament. They also eliminated the Bulls in 2015 and 2017. Uh, UConn has won at least one game in this tournament five times in the six years of the event. Huskies now five and three as the lower seeded team in the tournament. Uh, UConn shot 14 of 21 in the first half. The 667 field goal percentage uh, is a tournament record for a half, um, breaking the mark of 61.3% by UCF against ECU in 2015. And UConn's nine three pointers in the first half are also a tournament record for a half. Uh, three teams previously had eight, including twice by UConn uh, against USF and Cincinnati in successive days in 2015. For USF, uh, the Bulls fall to one and six all time in the American Championship. This was USF's first game as the higher seed uh, in the tournament. La Quincy Rito led USF with 17 points, became the uh, seven, seventh different player to lead USF in scoring in their seven tournament games. And Rito also had seven assists, matches the most in USF's American tournament history, uh, matching Josh Heath, who had seven against Rutgers here in 2014. While the Yukon contingent makes its way here, just ask everyone at this time to just check your devices and phones, set them to silent if you would. I will do the same. The format will be, we'll take an opening statement from uh, Coach Hurley, then we'll open up for questions for Coach and the student athletes. If you would just uh, extend the courtesy of introducing yourself and your media outlet uh, for your question, uh, we'd appreciate it. Also, the locker rooms uh, will be open for 30 minutes uh, from the time the coach leaves the locker room to come here. Um, we plan accordingly. Uh, good question. Yeah, back down uh, in the elevator. And then, so instead of going where you're going in the arena, like, you know, keep going left around the perimeter. So they're all, all walking in. Yeah, they're good. Okay, UConn is here. Again, we have uh, head coach Dan Hurley, uh, senior Jalen Adams, senior Taryn Smith, junior Christian Vital. Again, we'll take uh, an opening statement from Coach Hurley and then open it up to questions for Coach and the student athletes. Uh, coach, with that, your thoughts on the game, please. Yeah, thrilled. Uh, obviously, you know, thrilled to advance. You know, really liked the way we guarded. Uh, you know, re really liked. Uh, you know, the, the, really the way we played the game completely, especially the first 35 minutes. You know, to uh, you know, we were in complete, uh, you know, command of that game uh, up until, you know, when Jalen, that sequence, you know, where, you know, where Christian, you know, got knocked to the ground and then, you know, Jalen, you know, fouled out and then, 
Obviously, things got a little sketchy for us out there, but I thought up until that point, uh, we did everything we wanted to do. Um, you know, our guards played great. Terran got off to a great start. Christian and, and Jalen played at a incredibly, you know, high level. Um, you know, Tyler in the second half was big for us too. Um, and we did what we needed to do in terms of keeping the ball out of the paint, especially the first 30 plus minutes. And, and from a rebounding standpoint, you know, we were at least able to kind of hold the fort there. So thrilled to advance. Um, obviously, uh, you know, winning that first game, getting a chance to play in the quarters is, uh, is exciting for us. Please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone over to you and introduce yourself if you would please for the benefit of our guests. Over here in front to Don. Uh, Jalen, can, what was the feeling like in, in that first half when you, know, you guys were just on fire and I think you hit like 9 of 11? What, what kind of feeling was that for you? What was it like just kind of, you know, kind of experiencing a run like that? Um, it was just a great feeling. Uh, I was just out there having fun with my teammates. Um, Especially when it's just do or die, and you see everything going in the hoop like that, it's just a great feeling. Just you just build so much confidence. Um, so I was really just ha happy for my teammates. For Gavin, front. Uh, Towards the end of the game with Jalen out, Christian, what would you guys have to do to kind of close it out? Uh, I'll say just be solid, you know, just be solid on both ends, you know, um, execute our defensive uh, matchups, you know, just make sure that we're in the right spots and make sure that we rebound as well. We know that they're a tenacious rebounding team, you know, they beat us on the boards, you know, our past our, in our regular season games. So we knew that if we took that, took that from them that uh, we had a pretty good chance. Go to, to David first. Dan, the contributions you got from, from Isaiah today, uh, what can you say about that? And how hard has it been to get him playing time this year with, you know, the way that what roster is? It, it's just, it's tough because, you know, Josh has obviously come on, um, you know, co-most improved player in the conference. And, you know, he's a guy we're trying to, you know, build with here, both short-term and long-term. And then, you know, Eric, um, you know, Eric earned that backup spot. You know, uh, Isaiah was hurt a lot in the preseason. And even in the early part of the season, he was dealing with a high ankle. Um, you know, and then Eric obviously got off to that great start at the Garden, you know, which, uh, you know, and then, you know, you, you obviously want to give the senior, you know, that crack. You want to try to be loyal uh, or that opportunity. You know, you, you want to, you know, so we've kind of stayed with Eric as, as like the kind of the backup behind Josh. And, you know, but Isaiah is such a high character guy and, and he's a pretty smart player. And we kind of tipped him off the last couple of days. I know these guys have been talking to him. I know Jalen did about, you know, being ready. And, and um, you know, Pork Chop was ready today. Over here to Neil. <laughs> Neil Ostrow with the Journal Inquirer. Uh, Christian, in that first half, I think you made four threes in about a five-minute span. You've been shooting the ball pretty well all year, but is it something changed? Did, did you do anything different to when you got that hot? It's going down for me, you know. Um, Coaches put an emphasis on not taking just any shot, taking the right shot, you know. So, like, I still I saw how my teammates, you know, Jalen and Taryn, they were hot in the first half. So, you know, I didn't want to take I didn't want to take any extra shots where they could get one. And then when the shots came to me that I knew I could make, I put them up and they did drop. Go back over to Don. Don in front. Please. Yeah, Tar Taron, it, it looked like early in the game they might be leaving you open a little bit, and you hit those three shots right away, and then that kind of seemed to change a little bit what they what they had to do. Is that is that kind of the way you saw it? Um, yeah, I didn't shoot the ball great this year. I knew they were going to leave me open, but I was ready to fire. Um, my coach, had con coach Ellie, had confidence in me. All the assistant coaches had confidence in me. My teammates telling me, Jay said yesterday, if you're open, you better shoot it. And um, I've been shooting the ball while in practice. Um, made a couple and got me on, got us on the run. Go back to Gavin and then the mic. Gavin Keith from the middle of the day. Christian, you guys have dealt with a lot of adversity this year with guys being out and everything. Did that help you when you got Josh in foul trouble and you got Jalen foul trouble to know that you could still do it because you've been used to making adjustments on the fly? Oh, absolutely. I didn't, you know, I didn't panic at all. I know our, my teammates didn't panic either. You know, whoever we know that, you know, everyone has um, worked on their game a lot and 
throughout the year has become more confident each game and each practice. So, you know, when I was out there, I just knew that the other four guys were confident in themselves as well, and we were going to win that game no matter what. Back to Mike, please. You sure, Chuck? We're good. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed. Dan, you guys had lost six in a row. You've now won three of four. You've advanced to the tournament. You have a really daunting task tomorrow. I'm just wondering your thoughts on confidence, playing the top team in the league, and kind of having built some momentum leading into, into this, the, the importance of that. Yeah, I mean, th these guys have helped us this year, uh, you know, establish a, a work ethic, you know, character, culture, that when we were going through that bad stretch, you know, that we kind of stayed in the fight, and the young players kept developing, and Terran and Christian, while Jalen was out, you know, kind of kept things together, um, you know, and because, you know, you know, I don't know if you noticed about Christian, but he's a guy with a lot of confidence. So, you know, like, I don't think anyone ever gave in. And then, you know, quietly on the side, they saw Jalen working and, and rehabbing. And, you know, I'm sure they knew that he was eventually going to get back out there for us. So I just think, you know, that that, that South Florida win at home, uh, you know, was, was just kind of huge for us. And then get Jalen back. You can obviously see uh, the way offensively, in particular, things have changed uh, you know, he just he, he he gets so much attention, and he just he makes the right play so often. Um, and when you have a guy, you know, a player of his caliber on your team, and you have a guy shooting the ball the way Christian is, and um, you know, and then some of the other pieces we have, um, you, know, you always got a chance. When you got you know the most talented player in the conference on your team, you always got a chance. Time for a couple more. Back in front to Dave. For anybody, really, just the challenge of Houston tomorrow, what, what they bring to the table and how tough that that's going to be for you guys. It's definitely going to be a tough challenge, but I think we're ready for it. Um, <clears throat> I know our guys got a lot of confidence. They they, they held their own in the, in the first matchup uh, without two starters in there, and I think the confidence is just going to go through the roof with uh, me coming back. And I don't know. We're just going to see what happens. Also, you got Jalen back, so I like our chances. Last one for Don. Christian and, and Jalen, if you could speak to this since you were here last year, just how much different this feels than the, the game last year with SMU in the, the first round. Uh, ironically, the score was the same, 80 to 73 oh. or reversed. But I just wonder how much, how much different this feels like from last year in this tournament. We should have won by more. Fact. What? Fact. Sorry. You guys go. I'm sorry. I'll say, I'll say the main difference is that we're not thinking about going back to stores right now, you know, to just be honest with you, we're thinking about Houston, our next matchup, and going to the next round, and with a lot of confidence with a good group of guys who feel who feel confident in each, not only themselves, but each other, you know, I think we've really been through a lot this year, and, um, and now it's March, so now it's time to just lay everything out on the line. Um, well, I just think the, the difference between last year and this year is just the team's so much more locked in. Um, we're not worrying about other things, outside things. Uh, everyone's just locked in on the team in front of us, uh, their, the matchups, all of that stuff. So now that we got past USF, I think now we're just all locked in on, on Houston. So outside things aren't really affecting us. UConn, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Okay, joined now by USF uh, head coach Brian Gregory. 
and sophomore David Collins. Uh, again, we'll take an opening statement from Coach Gregory and then open up to questions for Coach and, and, uh, and for David. I give uh, UConn a lot of credit in terms of their, their first half. They're running their transition offense. Um, really put us in a bind. We were on our heels in transition. They made some threes in that, which uh, kind of set the tone for the first half. I thought in the second half we played a lot better. Um, just couldn't get that lead under 10 until the last you know, four minutes. Um, our guys, as they've done all year long, continue to fight the whole game. Just didn't make enough um, enough baskets to to cut into that lead earlier in the second half. Um, you know, defensively we we didn't play as well as we need to play to to beat a team that is as explosive offensively at the guard spot as they are. A big key for us was to you know do a good job on Carlton because he's been playing so well. We got him in foul trouble and we kind of eliminated him from the game. Um, but they're, you know, a different team uh, when Jalen Adams plays because he creates shots for other people and he's able to make shots. Um, we weren't as aggressive as we needed to be in the first half defensively on the threes and a lot came in transition. So um, played better in the second half, but in, in this league against that type of competition, not good, not good enough. We'll take questions now for Coach and, and for uh, David. Please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone over to you and please introduce yourself for the benefit of our guests. Over here in front, please. We'll turn to the Daily Stampede. Coach Gregory, um, UConn was 0-15 in that game up in stores, and then they go on that huge run. What was the difference between those two games? You know, when you, they're a good shooting team, and I thought defensively we were very, very good in, in stores. They missed some open shots, so we had them off rhythm a little bit. Um, you know, it, when you got a team that can shoot the ball, if you – give them some open ones and they get it going, then they start making some tough ones. And that's that's what we did. Uh, you know, um, Taron Smith, who's not a high percentage shooter, got him going a little bit early, made a three, made a couple jump shots. Um, you know, and then we, we let Vitel get loose a little bit as well. And then they made some tough ones. They made some tough ones that were contested. Um, you know, they're, they're a good shooting team that can really get it going at times. Uh, volatile scores in, in Vital and, and Adams, and that's exactly what you saw today. Over here. Come on. David, after being down um, big in the first half, what does it say about the resiliency of your team to come back and make it really close in the second half? I think that's one trait that we have. We always fight, and, you know, that's going to carry on. And I just think we always, that's, that's our identity. Questions in the back over here? Coach, can you talk about the success of the season and where you started from the beginning of the year to now? Yeah, you know, obviously we're disappointed right now. You know, this is, we wanted to do another thing that had never been done in our program, and that's winning in this tournament. You know, we've never done it. Um, so our guys had an opportunity to do that. So when you have an opportunity like that and you don't make the most of it, it's disappointing. Um, and, and you're in the midst of the season and you want to keep winning and you want to win games and all those different things. Um, but if you told me that this, this program and we'd have this type of, you know, success at this point, um, a little less than two years ago when we took over the job, I, I didn't think we'd be here. You know, um, you know, a lot of credit goes to the, the guys and a lot of credit goes to my staff. Um, you know, we talk about recruiting and developing because um, that's how you build a program. Um, and in two recruiting classes, we have two guys that have made all freshman team, two guys have made all league, the defensive player of the year and the freshman of the year. Um, that's recruiting and that's developing and that's also bringing in guys that want to be developed and want to work. Um, so the future is bright at the same time, you know, we, we live in a now society and so we wanted more right now and unfortunately uh, we didn't play well enough today to do that. Um, but at the same time, as I said, the building process is never a linear line where it's, you just, everything builds on top. There's peaks and valleys to it and you got to stay consistent and resilient and our guys have proven that all year long that they've done that we're going to be able to 
use some of the disappointments and adversity that we're facing right now in order to, to build. You know, you look at, you know, UConn and what they did today, Terry and Smith let him off, and he's a fifth-year senior. Uh, Jalen Adams is a, is a senior, you know, and, and those two guys early and then throughout the game with Adams kind of dominated the game. And, again, I always say you got to get to that point where you're, you're playing upperclassmen and they've been through this stuff before, um, and we're just not quite there yet, you know. And at the same time, you're gonna, you know, again, I'm not going to lie, we're disappointed in that, um, but not discouraged, and there's a big difference between the two. Any other questions for Coach or David? Get back in front. Coach, you often described LaQuincy as a, as a rhythm player, and it, missing out on the last two games was kind of hard for him, obviously. Do you think he got back in that rhythm today? I, I, I thought he was better. I thought he was better. Um, you can still see, even out there, he's not quite at, a, at 100%. I thought there was times where... Um, he had seven assists. David had four assists. Um, you saw a little bit of what we were before he got hurt in the first Central Florida game. Um, you know, so again, the the, the rest def definitely helped him. Um, but because of that out of rhythm, we're not able, you know, defensively to kind of play the same way that we were playing before in terms of our initial pickup and, and stopping their break in the backcourt as opposed to when they're in their front court. So it's just a, you know, you got to, you got to um, pick it up in some other, in some other areas and um, just not quite able to do that today. Final questions? USF, thank you. All right, guys, thank you.